Mount Cook National Park is an absolute must for any visitor to the South Island. It is an incredibly beautiful place with numerous photography locations, amazing hikes and some of the finest scenery that New Zealand has to offer. There is two viewpoints that I recommend to visit even before you enter the national park. The first one is on the southern shore of Lake Pukaki, right next to the visitor center. On a clear day it offers a breathtaking view of Mount Cook looming over the lake. If you're lucky you can even get some reflections. And while you're at it, make sure to try the salmon sold in a nearby shop, it is absolutely delicious. The other viewpoint is Peter's Lookout, a little bit to the north. That's where you get this classical view of the twisty Mount Cook Road leading into the distance. By the time we got there at sunset though, the clouds came in so I only managed to get a moody shot. But this is a fabulous spot for a sunrise on a clear day. Mount Cook National Park is a hiker's paradise, there is a lot to explore here. But since we only had a couple of days in the area and were mostly interested in the photos, we decided to do the easier and more popular tracks. Welcome to a cloudy day in Mount Cook Valley. We're hoping for better weather, but luckily it's not raining. So that leaves some room for moody shots. Well, that's the mission of the day, quite simple. And so we're just exploring the most popular hikes in the area. And the one we're starting with right now is Tasman Lake hike. Just a 15 minutes walk towards the viewpoint over the Tasman Lake. But there is also like an extension of this track. You can go down to the lake itself. It's gonna take another hour or so, so we're gonna do that as well. The viewpoint at the end of the official hike offers great views of the Tasman Lake. This is where most people turn back, however, there is also an unofficial trail that starts at the lookout and follows the moraine reach down to the lake. You won't find it on the maps, but the path is clearly visible to the right of the viewpoint area. It's a more difficult and involved track, but for me it was also the most interesting part of the hike. There is almost no other people around, so you can truly enjoy the beauty of the surrounding landscape in silence and solitude. Oh, and did I mention? There is a ton of great photo opportunities along the way. I think I found this nice image just overlooking that vast like plain or valley and uh, what I like about this image it's like nothing really stands out there's no foreground just the vastness of this whole thing it's so beautiful it's almost like a little bit abstract but not really because you can kind of figure out what it is I guess it's a river that kind of flows and bends and I use that as a subtle little leading line towards the mountain 
And there are those clouds right above the mountain, which have a bit of a texture. So all together, it kind of gives this ethereal, like moody look, which I really like. Once you reach the lake, I recommend heading a little bit further down to where the river outlet is. There is a lot of rocks and icebergs here, so you've got all you need for an interesting photo. Just take your time and think about the best composition. There is a lot of elements here to work with. There is a stone statue, the cairn, then there is the iceberg, and there is rocks in the foreground, there is a mountain over there. What I tried initially is just to put everything into one frame, but I found it doesn't really work. So I looked around a little bit, trying to find the best composition, finally settled on this one. What I'm doing here, I'm actually eliminating the statue at all. So I'm just using those rocks as a foreground and as a slight leading line, which leads your eye towards the iceberg. And then the mountain is perfectly above the iceberg. And I kind of like this composition because it's simple and kind of reflects this place nicely for me. The other problem is that I don't really like those ripples in the water. So what I'm doing, I'm putting on both my six top and the filter and the polarizer. Together they give me five second exposure, which is just enough to you know, smoothen out the water. I'm also focus stacking because the rocks are pretty close to the camera. And finally, just because I kind of like the structure in the clouds and the five second exposure just smoothens it out together with the water. I take in the third shot where I take both my filters away and have the fast shutter speed freezing the, uh, the motion in the clouds. So I have those three shots, I'm going to combine them together and I think it's going to be a nice shot of the Tasman Lake. The Hooker Valley Track is probably the most famous trail in Mount Cook National Park. It's a 10km return hike that begins at the White Horse Hill Car Park, a short 5 minute drive away from the Mount Cook Village, then takes you past the Miller Lake, crosses the Hooker River a few times, and ends at the lookout that offers stunning views over the Hooker Lake and the surrounding mountains. There is a lot of incredible alpine scenery along the way, so have your camera ready. The viewpoint at the end of the lake is a good place to have some rest or eat your packed lunch. But for the best photo opportunities, head down to the water. As you can see, there is no sun and there is no sky visible, so the clouds there don't add up much to the image. So what I'm doing instead is concentrating on what I found interesting about the scene. That is this iceberg right here. It's kind of shaped like a fish. So I've just set up my camera in low angle position so that I get the minimum of the sky above. I get the uh, subject that is the fish or the iceberg in kind of the upper third. And then the lower part of the image is just water reflection and just kind of a negative space along the This 
is probably the most sophisticated selfie that I've done. What we have here is me sitting on this rock. It's actually kind of high above all the other rocks. I also have a camera set up way over that rock. So what I did is climb over that rock, set up the tripod there, aimed it carefully at this rock, came all the way back here, climbed on this one, and then I have this little guy. And that's the epic selfie ready. how we can spend hours in a beautiful place like this just sitting doing nothing watching the mountains watching the lake such a beautiful place just a piece of advice because we were given like two days in a row of weather like this gray and overcast with uh, low-hanging clouds if you get the conditions like this I, I, I kind of preferred the yesterday's track the Tasman Lake one just because here, the Hooker Valley track, it go the same path as everybody else and you get to see the same views as everybody else. And it just kind of felt a little dull in the weather like this. I mean, I'm sure in the beautiful weather it can be just epic views around every corner. For a weather like this, I would actually recommend doing the Tasman Lake one. Personally, I feel it offers more creative opportunities and you can kind of play around with different compositions there. And the weather doesn't matter that much starting to rain so we better head back to the car park I hope this video has been useful if it was put a like down below also subscribe to my channel I really appreciate it I always happy to see you here and yeah I'm gonna see you next one